Hi everyone and a very happy Imolk to you all. As usual I've started my celebrations um, at sunset today on the 31st of January and they'll be continuing into tomorrow. So for me now it is Imolk um, and as the sun set I lit this candle that you see here in front of me on the altar and kind of just spoke a few um, spontaneous words about the last light of winter because for me spring starts with Imolk um, that's the way that we view it uh, the, I would say the majority of people in Ireland still consider a spring to start in February rather than in March um, which is, seems to be the, the dominant um, the dominant idea in the UK and some people in Ireland as well but um, over here in Ireland for the, for the most part we still do consider spring to be starting tomorrow um, and we will indeed start to see, in fact there may still, there probably are in some parts already flowers appearing and um, we will certainly be seeing them in the next couple of days and weeks um, and it does, uh, the difference in light is so drastic um, in Dublin and in this part of the world in general um, that you know you really do feel a difference you really do feel like the light is majorly growing by the time we get to this point and it just doesn't make any sense to think of it as um as winter anymore so um i have i kept thinking i actually had quite a lot of time on my hands this time on the run up to a milk like today because it's a saturday today the day that i'm doing the ritual i had most of the day during which i could have been kind of preparing and you know, last weekend I had a fairly quiet weekend. I could have been writing ritual and, and you know, it just, it just didn't come together for me. And I know I keep saying this every, every time I keep saying, oh, you know, I didn't get round to planning ritual, but this time for the first time, I feel like it was actually just a choice. And in the end, I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I couldn't bring myself to actually start um, you know, printing off pictures to p place on the altar and writing down words and setting out a structure and putting together a playlist of music. It just didn't seem right to me at all. And I had a realisation and I've actually written a blog post that I think I will probably have posted on the 31st of January. Um, I'll probably be posting this video tomorrow on the 1st of February. Um, but I, I wrote a blog post about this and just about how I've been kind of it kind of suddenly re it suddenly dawned on me today that I've been feeling a little bit like my spirituality, my spiritual practice feels a bit fraudulent. And I know that this isn't how I've always felt about it, that it feels a bit like a pantomime that I sort of put on for myself. I know that this is not, definitely not how I felt about it in the past. And that, you know, my, my rituals that I've conducted before really did come from a very pure place um from you know that they that they were heartfelt and meaningful but right now uh it just doesn't make any sense for me to go about the usual kind of ritual structure and um just you know I would feel like I was going through the motions and I decided just not to so essentially um and this is going to be the first time that I've done this in a really long time I mean I'm still tempted to print off the words that I wrote uh, two years ago, I think, for Imbolc, because uh, I certainly don't think I wrote anything new last year. I'm still tempted to print that out and to have the words there. Um, honestly, I mightn't. I, I really just feel like I'm just going to light some candles and sit. And that to do anything else will just kind of ring hollow, that it will just feel like postulating. And I, I can't really fully explain why this is the case, like why why I'm feeling quite like this right now, but I think it has something to do with just the amount of upheaval that's been going on in my life for the past couple of weeks and months. This winter was not the most difficult winter of my life by a long shot, but certainly I think the most turbulent, the most up and down. Um, I've had just so many things coming to an end and changing and so many ideas about how things are gonna come come into being things that I thought were going to happen that then didn't happen, um, realizations about myself uh, and some really, um, really quite harsh lessons learned, I think, over the last couple of months. And I'm still, I'm still kind of reeling. 
and trying to figure figure myself out and figure out where I am and what the hell is going on. And not just in a really painful way or anything. Like I say, it's it wasn't the most difficult uh, winter of my life. I've had, I, I've gone through winters before where really upsetting things were going on and I was really, you know, in despair and very, you know, really, really sad and really not coping very well. And that's not how I feel right now. Like I, I do feel... I, I don't know if happy is the right word, but you know, I do feel relatively happy. I'm still finding joy in everything that I do and my friends and meeting people and the work that I'm doing and everything. It's not that I'm like, you know, just embroiled in misery or something. Um, it's just that I, I think I lost myself there for a few months and a lot of things have been stripped away. Um, and it really does feel like this winter just really fittingly like with the winter that everything sort of died away everything was stripped back to the bone um to to the core and that I've had a lot of things about myself revealed to me um a lot of very kind of old and deeply ingrained patterns I think have come to light um I'm starting to maybe get a better understanding of some yeah, some very deeply ingrained patterns that I have been putting forward as the way that things, you know, are supposed to be, the way that things are supposed to work, things that I that I am looking for in life and um, that I'm starting to realise are just wrong or just not actually the path to happiness at all. And then, of course, just on a very practical level, uh, a lot of things are being stripped away in terms that you know, my relationship has ended, my job has ended, and now I'm, I'm also, it also looks as though I might be moving out of this flat in a couple of months um, to go and live with my parents for a few months um, before I move away somewhere else. So, yeah, it really does feel, and it feels quite fitting that at this time at Imolk, you know, the ground outside is still frozen and hard. We're at the coldest probably the coldest time of the year for us in well January is the coldest month here in Ireland and February often is really freezing we will still probably get snow um and you know the trees are still completely bare there is this kind of hushed kind of stillness on the land but there are these stirrings of life starting to happen and we do start to see like I said flowers emerging from the ground and there is this feeling that the earth has been holding its breath and it's now just starting to release it. And it's now just starting to, to make something of the stillness and emptiness that it has been holding and nurturing for the past three months. Uh, and that is definitely how I feel. I think, I have no idea, you know, how quickly, how long it's going to take for me to achieve clarity and to manifest the changes and the, the internal changes and the external changes that I'm hoping to. Um, I'm really hoping that that spring will bring greater clarity and more inner strength and um, a whole host of things like that. Um, I'm really rambling now. I, I really didn't mean this for this video, for this part of the video to get very long at all, but I guess what I'm saying is that just having a very stripped back and austere kind of in bulk ritual um, just seems right this year. It just seems like the only thing to be done. And maybe that is really just reflecting my life and particularly my emotional spectrum, my emotional life right now. Um, that the only thing to be done is to just sit and wait and experience and just see what comes about. So I don't think I'm going to be doing an awful lot tomorrow. Um, I'm sure I'll switch on the camera at some point just to say hello, but I might not have much to share. Um, again, and maybe there's a reason for this again, you know, I really, I just didn't make any plans at all. I didn't even attempt to make any plans to go anywhere tomorrow, really. Um, which is kind of unlike me. Um, there, there will be a family dinner, but that's not in aid of anything. That's just, that's kind of coincidence. Um, so yeah, this might be the bulk of my of my Sabbath blog, uh, vlog this year or this Sabbath. Um, 
I'm not sure if I'll have much more to add. Uh, and probably the ritual that I conduct that I'm going to be doing now very soon. It's, it, I don't even know, I don't think I should even call it a ritual. A celebration even seems like, well, we'll see. <laughs> but I think um, I think anything that arises during that is, is really just going to be too personal to be of any relevance or interest to you guys. And probably this whole um, ramble has been um, really quite personal and not particularly relevant to you either. But um, I suppose it's just tying in my experiences, what's going on with me, um, with the general feeling of the Sabbath. And I think I also want to demonstrate how nurturing it really can be to be following the wheel of the year through these difficult times and how it really bolsters me sometimes to see the reflection of what's going on within for me and in my personal life um, in the land and in the cycles of the land because it reminds me that nothing stays still. Um, it reminds me that change is inevitable, change is the only constant um, and if I'm at the bottom of the wheel now I can only rise to the top and not only that but just that it reminds me that I'm because I tend to have a fear of change and whenever I change things or let go of things I, um, I you know I suffer from a lot of anxiety about making those decisions it can be really easy to fear letting go of things um, and to fear the kind of emptiness that arises when you find yourself on the other side of making those decisions. But um, it's I think it's really therapeutic to tap into the wheel of the year and remember that the change was going to happen anyway. You know, there there was no there was no holding back the change. Um, it's uh, the death card comes to mind, that sort of inevitability of change and ending and endings being required for new beginnings and that there's no point in trying to stand in the path of that change um, and there's no point in trying to hold it back um, and we really just need to sweep away the debris in order to let new life blossom. So I'll leave it there for the moment guys um, and if I'm not talking to you again I hope you have a really wonderful Imolk whatever you celebrate it as whether it's um, midwinter for you or um, or whether you're in the Southern Hemisphere and um, you're celebrating, what would it be, uh, Lunasa. Um, yeah, I just, I hope that you, I hope that you're having maybe uh, a more celebratory kind of Sabbath to me. Um, mine feels very pensive so far, but um, I hope it brings you what you need at this time. I did do a little bit of preparation after that. Um, I changed the altar candles to white ones, just which just seemed really um, appropriate. And I did actually put the two St. Bridget's crosses that I made last year on my altar. I don't have the, the materials to make new ones this year and I'm not planning on it. But um, I might just bless these, sort of reinvigorate them for the coming year. Um, they'll be getting pretty yellow <laughs> by another year's time. Um, but I kind of don't feel like burning them or getting rid of them, throwing them out um, without creating new ones. So yeah, I'll probably be doing that at some point um, during the course of the ritual slash celebration or whatever it is. Good morning and happy spring. Um, it's now about 20 minutes after sunrise. So um, yeah, spring has very much officially begun. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, the sun obviously is, is only really just risen above the horizon and really just risen above, starting to rise above um, houses and trees and stuff. But um, I can see that it's going to be, well, the, the sky is completely clear. It's set to be uh, a very cold but very sunny and beautiful day. So, um, yeah, I sat at the altar this morning and just did a meditation on the breath, which is what I've been doing um, in the morning for the last couple of days instead of the daily practice that I outlined uh, in a previous video. Um, I do still want to do that practice and I do like the idea of setting daily intentions, but for the moment I just feel like scaling it back a bit and um, just concentrating more on meditation, I suppose, than anything else. So um, I'll just do that for a while and, and see how I feel about it, I suppose. Um, ritual last night was interesting. Um, it turned out to kind of feel more reverent and connected than I expected, but it was very simple. Um, 
but I did actually end up speaking the words that I usually would um, when setting up sacred space and I kind of realised that there wasn't a huge difference between what that ritual actually looked like and what say my um, winter solstice ritual actually looked like. It was all kind of in the mind the difference I think in terms of feeling like I didn't put in a lot of preparation for Imolk um, and just that that was what felt right. Um, I also didn't do any workings or anything like that. I really just, the core of, of the ritual was really just a meditation. And I wasn't pushing myself to sort of explore the astral or do a path working or anything like that either. I really just focused on the meditation, allowed images to arise as they came and stuff like that. But um, but really it was just, just an exercise in being in the moment, I suppose. Um, being in that moment of transition between winter and, and spring. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go out for a run now in a, in a couple of minutes and then I'll be heading out to my parents at some point, my parents' house at some point. It did dawn on me that I could actually pick up some reeds at my parents' house and make a Bridget's Cross before sunset, which would still um, very much kind of be within the, the parameters of Imolk. So um, I might actually do that, uh, but I'll see what time I get out to my parents' house and if that seems feasible or whatever. Um, because there is a place nearby where we can easily find some rushes um, in order to to make them. And it might that might be nice. It might be nice to make a new one. Um, I was just going to leave the old ones up another year, but um, it might be nice to to make a new one. I might, you know, I might kind of feel like I, I should have taken the opportunity. Um, but we'll see how I feel. So um, I think that's probably about it. If I do decide to make a St. Bridget's Cross, I might film again during the day. I'll bring my camera with me just in case. But... Um, yeah, sure, we'll see. And yeah, again, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you soon.